This is Nachos Nachos, the story behind the world's favorite snack by Sandra Nichol and Oliver Dominguez. To the families of Ignacio Anaya, Mamie Fain, Finan, and Rodolfo de los Santos. To my kids, Aubrey and Gage. In 1895, a baby boy was a baby boy was born in northern Mexico. His name was Ignacio Anaya. And like a lot of Ignacios, he was called Nacho for short. Nacho's parents died when he was young, and he went to live with a foster mother. He loved to sit in the kitchen while she made quesadillas. She warmed corn tortillas, folded cheese inside, and toasted them until they were golden on the outside and melted on the inside. Nacho ate up one quesadilla after the other. Nacho learned about cooking from his foster mother. As he grew older, he became quite good at other tasks around the kitchen too. When Nacho turned 23, he found a job at a restaurant. He was willing to do whatever was needed, seat guests, pass out menus, take orders, and serve meals. As Nacho went from table to table, people smiled. He had a special talent for making diners happy. In the Mexican city of Piedras Negras, Rodolfo de los Santos heard about Nacho. Rodolfo was opening a new restaurant, the Victory Club, right across the Rio Grande River from Eagle Pass, Texas in the United States. The Club Victoria, as the restaurant was called in Spanish, had its own orchestra, a moonlight patio for dancing and four different menus featuring everything from steaks to seafood to Mexican specialties. Rodolfo wanted the best music, the best food, and the best people, and that included Nacho. The Victory Club's customers came from both Mexico and the United States. When they arrived, Nacho made sure that everyone felt welcome. Nacho even knew how to please Mamie Finan. Mamie lived in Eagle Pass, but she was known on both sides of the border for her outstanding cooking. At home, she served guests jalapeno jelly, French crepes, and oyster soup. At the Victory Club, she wanted to try new dishes. One afternoon in 1940, during the Victory Club's quiet hours between lunch and dinner, Mamie walked in with three friends. Nacho, we're tired of the usual type snacks, Mamie said. Do you think you could whip us up something new, something different? Nacho smiled and headed for the kitchen. But Nacho had a problem. He didn't have any idea what to make. Even worse, there wasn't a single cook in the kitchen and Rodolfo was nowhere to be seen. Nacho threw open the doors and the cupboards. He searched in the refrigerator and finally he spotted some freshly fried pieces of corn tortillas in a bowl and he got an idea. Nacho carefully spread out the tortilla pieces on a platter. He sprinkled them with cheddar cheese. He topped each piece of tortilla with a strip of pickled jalapeno pepper. As a last touch, he put the tortillas in the oven until they were golden and melted, just like his foster mom's quesadillas.
Nacho rushed the hot platter out of the kitchen and placed it on the table. Mamie picked up the tortilla and took a bite. Hot, crispy tortilla, melted cheddar cheese, a slice of jalapeno, so simple, so scrumptious, so spectacular. What do you call these snacks? asked Mamie. Nacho grinned. Well, I guess we can just call them Nacho Special, he said. Mamie and her friends ordered another platter and another. They ate until not a single bite of the crispy new snack was left. When the women finally left, a couple of hours later, Nacho had already gone home. But on their way out of the Victoria Club, the women came across friend after friend arriving for dinner, and they told everyone to order the delicious new dish, Nacho's Special. As soon as Nacho arrived at work the next day, waiters crowded around him. They wanted to know what Nacho's special was. Customers had been asking for it since the night before. Nacho headed straight into the kitchen and started cooking. Rodolfo watched his customers eat. Nacho made people smile when he served them as a waiter, but their smiles were even bigger when they ate Nacho's cooking. Rodolfo promoted Nacho to executive chef and put him in charge of making the diners happy. He also added Nacho's new dish to every Victory Club menu. Nacho's special. Year after year, word of Nacho's special spread. Restaurants all over Mexico and United States began to serve the dish. Some added beans, some added guacamole, and somewhere along the way, restaurants started calling the dish simply nachos. People still traveled to Piedras Negras. They wanted to eat nachos in the city where they were invented. Even a president of the United States and a famous Mexican and American actors came to try the crunchy, cheesy, spicy snack. When the Victory Club closed in 1961, Nacho decided to open a restaurant of his own. He found a place in Piedras Negras, set up tables and chairs, wrote out his menu, and made sure to have plenty of tortillas, cheddar cheese, and jalapeno peppers on hand. Once everything was ready, he put up a sign on his front door. He called his restaurant Nachos, and most popular dish was, of course, Nachos Nachos. And here is the original Nachos recipe. The end. I love you.